One of the biggest talking points surrounding overcoming climate change is the fight against carbon. How do we reduce the social costs of carbon emissions? The European Union, with its proposed Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, or CBAM, is attempting to curb the use of carbon by putting a steep price tag on it. In short, it proposes a levy on imports of specific products. As of now, the tax will be applied to the following carbon-intensive industries – electricity, cement, aluminum, fertilizer, as well as iron and steel products. This is expected to be in a transitional phase starting in 2023 and be fully operational by 2026. CBAM has been developed under the auspices of the Emissions Trading System, or ETS, that has already been in place in the EU since 2005. It also falls under the umbrella of the Green Deal, the EU's whole-of-society approach to fighting climate change. The EU's ETS is qualified as the world's first emissions trading system that sets a cap on the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that can be released by specific industries in various sectors. Under the ETS, allowances are bought and exchanged on an open market. One issue stalling progress on climate action has been the number of ETS-free allowances provided in order to mitigate issues such as carbon leakage. Carbon leakage refers to the increase in emissions when an industry relocates from a country with strict climate rules to a country with weak rules that attempt to control emissions. This is where a proposal like CBAM helps to provide more structure to a market that is still looking to define itself at a larger scale. By imposing a carbon tax on imports via the CBAM, the EU hopes to affect external change. Driving change from the inside out is their goal. With a powerful single market, the EU can have a serious impact when it comes to conversations surrounding the development of climate and carbon. In the US, conversations dealing with a carbon border adjustment proposal are becoming more prevalent at the federal level. At the state level, there are two serious programs currently in place. The first is California's cap and trade system. This system covers upwards of 85% of California's emissions. The state also has its own carbon border adjustment system, applied exclusively to its power market. In addition to California's efforts is the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative that covers 11 northeastern states. This has been in place since 2009, setting a general regional cap on emissions originating from power generation. At the federal level, the Biden administration has recently suggested plans for a carbon border adjustment proposal. It has yet to pledge to setting federal price on carbon, which many experts argue would be the most effective solution. With the forthcoming transatlantic green trade agenda in the works, it will be interesting to see how these various initiatives play out on either side of the Atlantic. But it is important to note that the transatlantic relationship does not exist in a vacuum. Adopting a carbon border system could lead to serious repercussions. The international backlash will not come lightly. Russia and China are a few of many who have stated that CBAM measures violate trade principles. If initiatives like CBAM are implemented, there will surely be economic tit-for-tat. Many countries argue these proposals are just trade protectionism measures cloaked in the pretense of climate action. The potential issues at the WTO level and in the courts are many. For example, CBAM could violate the most favored nation treatment rule if the EU discriminated against like products from various WTO countries based solely on their carbon content. Proposals such as implementing a WTO climate waiver could help provide concrete solutions to such a problem. According to founding member and twice chairman of the appellate body of the WTO, James Bacchus, a climate waiver that would permit trade restrictions based on national initiatives that specifically fight climate change would help solve the concerns around CBAM and compatibility with the WTO. The reality is CBAM is still a bit away from being implemented effectively, and conversations around such an initiative are far from over. The transatlantic relationship will evolve and adapt to advance industry change, and carbon border adjustment proposals are the first of many steps required to make a lasting impact in this space.